Four straight. Roll. Right body. Roll. Pivot out right. Double. Triple. And two good jump. Good again. Ah, guys, <laughs> we started this video off with some fast mitt work because on this video we're going to talk all about mitt work, the pros and cons of hitting the mitts. And today I'm really happy to be joined by boxing mitt work expert Glenn Holmes, also my good friend and my business partner as well. So check out his channel for more videos like this one. Oh, I need to get me breath. My name's Tony Jeffries, I'm an Olympic medalist boxer myself, former undefeated professional, seven times national champion, European champion, and on this YouTube channel, I give you lots of boxing education. So if this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. I'm still tired. All right, let's jump into it. Mitt work, mitt work, pros and cons. Glenn, mm -hmm. let's start off with the cons. There's so many pros, but I want to start off with the cons in mitt work? Probably the biggest con is there's a lot of um, mitt work uh, co coaches out there doing mitt work that don't keep it realistic. You've got to keep it realistic and what they'll tend to do is do more work than the boxer and it makes the boxer shorten up the punches and use bad form and that's the complete opposite of what we're trying to do with mitt work. We've seen that but what we've just did there is that a little demo was pretty unrealistic but we did that so you watch the video and you think whoa what was that we call out the hook so we've got you involved but out there it was unrealistic you wouldn't really do that in a fight or a competition right but in in 20 seconds how high your heart rate got from that and how yeah. much you had to concentrate on drilling the combinations but even though i'm doing maybe unrealistic combinations for a, a, a fight situation what i try and do my approach to it is still make you keep your punches long and explosive and fast and make sure your defense is accurate so even though we're doing maybe necessarily not the most realistic combinations in those yeah. flows I'm still trying to make sure that you're punching long and I'm not doing too much work yeah. where you're just tapping it like this, which is the most common. Con yeah, because we've, we've seen that before. If you've got a social media account, if you've even seen Floyd Mayweather, then let's do a little demo. Yeah, and it's like, uh, and then the, then, then the coach is doing it. And, and it kind of it kind of looks like that. We make fun of that. It kind of looks like that. Yeah, that's what we were talking about, the unrealistic combinations. But what we did there, like a, a, a one, two, slip, two, hook, two, block, this is a, uh, it might not look realistic, but it really is. We'll do a fast. So it's a. Now, right down there, fast like that, you might think, well, that's not realistic. But if we slowed it down, it is. Yeah. So we'll slow it down. I've done the one, two. I'm defending the jab with a slip there. And what's the best punch to throw there from the counter? It's going to be a two, and then a hook, and then a two. And then if he counters with a left hook, I'm going to block that. Now the best way to, to counter punch that block is by dropping me back heel, throwing that hook, boom, come up with a two. So it's a fast combination. Yes, you will never see that combination land exactly like that in a fight. Maybe, but you'll probably not. But everything we did was real. And uh, I know I made fun a little bit about what we did at the start, but again, if you go back, watch the start, what we did, everything we did was realistic. Even the uppercut, Hook two, so you throw it there. If someone, if I'm in a fight with someone and they throw that, look where they open, boom, from there. So watch, do it there. So it's a boom, boom, boom. Yep. Come back with that. So all we did, we did realistic combinations, but we put them together to make what we like to call a flow. Uh, but back on to the cons. Other cons of hitting the mitts, I mean, the big one is, is your coach. If your coach is not right, it's, uh, you're not gonna uh, be able to, to get better at boxing. But if you're a good coach, you know, you will get better at boxing. But other cons is, if I'm throwing a jab at Glenn, you catch the jab, Glenn. Again. Again. So I fainted. You see what he's done? He come forward. He met the punch. And now, if we're fighting, you're not fighting someone who's coming forward like that. So that's another con. Because if you're hitting a heavy bag, obviously that doesn't move. On a mitt, they're meeting your punches. Now, he's got to meet my punch. If he doesn't meet me punch, I'm going to punch through. I'm going to get injured he's going to get injured. So he needs to be strong and he needs to give me that resistance, especially when he's catching the punches for someone that hits really hard like me. <laughs> no, if you're in with someone who hits hard, you've got to give that strong resistance as well. Yeah. So that is another con right there, right? Yeah, on the flip side of that, the positive thing is that I can create, I'm creating the targets for you every time. So like, you don't know exactly, you, you kind of get, you have to create your own target on the heavy bag. 
If you're just hitting the heavy bag, it's up to you to create a target. You're kind of zoning in on where right. you need to punch, right? Whereas with this, I'm creating the target for you, which is probably more realistic in, in the, in, if you're in a fight situation, the target's actually there for you, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. moving, it's not always in the same spot, but you've got to try and find that target. Yeah, that's Whereas, a pro. Yeah. That's a pro. Yeah. Because, because you, you have to zone in on the target when it's yeah. available. With the heavy bag, it's always right there in front of you. And you just kind of find it, it's there, right? Yeah. But now, like, with the mitts, you've got to zone in on exactly the same spot for whatever punch right. it is. And one drill I like to use to just drill that real quick is give you random punches. Yeah. So you kind of always, you're not, he's not knowing what to expect. It's good for just training that reactive. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. You, you're like reacting to the target like you would in a fight. It's like there's an opening, boom, I'm going to catch it. Yeah. Boom, I'm going to catch that opening. Uh, so that, I love doing that in terms of just keeping the... Yeah. Keeping no, that, that's great. That's, that's definitely another pro. But let's we keep talking. I want to talk more about the cons. And then we're going to talk about the pros. Another con is, you kind of said it there, you're taking the thinking out of it for me. So when you're on the mitts with someone, the coach is kind of doing a lot of the thinking. Right there, Glenn's did a great example of not doing that. Now he's the best mitt work guy in the world. So you know, I, I expect that from him. But tell me, you've never seen a coach who does that sort of stuff, right? Because that right there is making me think. Generally, a coach will do kind of some of the stuff that we did at the beginning, where every single punch, I only punch what he calls. Now, if he's calling out all of these punches, right, he's took the thinking out of it for me. Compared to when you're on the heavy bag, and when you're on the heavy bag, you've got to think for yourself. That's why it's, it's harder, generally, to hit the heavy bag than it is to hit the mitts. Because you've got to think, you've got to, um, it's not meeting you. you, it's there, you've got to punch through the target. Yeah, you've got to create the resistance for yourself. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly, you've got to create the resistance for yourself. I would tell people, you know, the heavy bag is generally better than the mitts. Right. Uh, definitely, uh, de well, I see that, but both for the pros and cons. But it's definitely better for the mitts for your conditioning. If you want to condition yourself for boxing and you haven't got a Glenn Holmes, you need to use the heavy bag more than the mitts because you could have a bad trainer yeah. who's there, ba ba, ba ba, or standing still, da da da, not moving up, ba 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 ba. You know, when you're on the heavy bag, you know you've got to put that work in yourself and it'll help you uh, bring up your conditioning. So a lot of the cons we've talked about so far are mostly because the trainers aren't doing it right. So for example, if they're not creating a realistic target, um, your job as the coach is to make your boxer or your client, whoever look good and use proper form and keep it as realistic as possible. So for example, you see a lot of coaches, they might hold the one two like this, so then you're punching straight across. And that is a very common mistake I'm yeah. gonna add in there. Coaches like this, and then the boxer ends up punching to the side. Now yeah. if I'm a boxer and I punch over there, guess where the power's gone? It's gone exactly over there. We want it straight down the pipe, right? Yeah. So a good tip for that is to keep it realistic and, and make you throw a good one too. And all the mitts real close together like this, and as soon as the jab's landed, just pull it away. So you can throw that one, two right down the pipe. One, two. There, so it's nice and long and straight. Yep, again. There you go. You can hear that pop too. And you go one, two is perfect, then it's right yeah. down that line and be punching right down that as if it was a head. Another one is mid work should be good for footwork and movement. Yeah. But a con, I guess, is a lot of coaches do it in place, aren't they? Yeah, so we'll have a coach who, who do the movement for you. So. Uh, let's let's give some examples, Glenn. With this, where you where you do the moving. So, so a lot of mid work you see on Instagram and on online, they'll just stand in place. They're doing the fancy combinations, and it's all just right here in place. There's no footwork involved. But then coaches who do try to put footwork in, they'll do it wrong, where they're doing more movement than the boxers. So they one two, and then you see this one two. There, you know, and I'm just end up dancing around him, and he's not even moved at all. Or it'll point or guide as well, so it takes that reactive element out of it too. So you'll see this quite a bit. So one, two, and then I'll just guide them like this, or I just point, and then tell them where to go, and kind of steering them like this. Now, if, if someone's not getting it, then you might need to do that, but you see that way too much, rather than just creating a realistic environment where I'm just kind of moving with him as if I was his opponent. One, two, moving in, man, come out. Good, so just moving with him, making him move, and it's like not that difficult to do. He's got to take a couple of steps in to make him move back or just create that distance. So he's got to use his footwork uh, in between. Yeah, so basically, what we get out of here is the cons 
is the trainer. If you don't have a, a great trainer doing this, and then it, it can be not great. Let's move on to the pros. There's some great, great pros out there for this. You want to talk about the first one? Yeah, about um, just keeping it realistic, but um, one, making sure that the resistance and timing's good, because you said you want to feel really good, yeah. right? So uh, the huge pro is every time you get that pop, it's just that confidence builder, right? So if I'm, I'm creating good resistance and timing for it, for a one-two hook, and he's getting that pop and that sound, that back, it's just making you feel good, isn't it? It's yeah. just building that confidence. And you, you, what you talk about on your channel a lot is the, more you, the better you feel, the better yeah. you're going to be. Yeah, the better you feel, uh, you feel good, you're going to perform better and you're going to want to do it more. So whether you're doing this for fighting or you're doing this for fitness, uh, or if you're a coach out there, you, know, you always want your boxer, your client to feel good. And if they feel good, they're going to continue to do it and they're going to improve in boxing. And that's what we want. We want everyone who's watching this to get better at boxing. Yeah. Now, another big, massive pro is it's fun. It's probably the most enjoyable thing that you will do when you're training for boxing is hitting the mitts. It's so much fun. I used to love hitting the mitts, you know? Hitting a heavy bag round after round. Let's just see you do six threes on a heavy bag. Well, I was doing three to five times a week when I was a professional boxer. It gets boring. It gets so boring. But now you're in with a coach who's giving you these combinations. He's making you slip, making you move, you're rolling, you're stepping, you know? doing all these great things, listening to that pop, what makes you feel good, yeah. you know, it's great for a, a boxer to do that. So for me, that's one of the biggest uh, pros. Yeah, and c compared to heavy bag, you're relying on that resistance and timing yourself and, and hitting the target yourself on the heavy bag. It's not always 10 times out of 10 that we perfectly landed shots on the heavy bag. I mean, if you're more experienced, it's probably going to be more, but um, most of the time when you're hitting the mitts with a good uh, mitt holder, it's just giving you that confidence because your punches just feel perfectly timed every single time, so you make yeah. it feel good. Yeah, it does. So, so the feel good factor is a huge pro of this. And then, like when you're in with a good coach who's giving you the mitt work, you know, he's giving you the movement. You work on the defense, you're working on your reactions, yeah. which you can't get really from a heavy bag or, or anything when you work on by yourself. So. Yeah. Yeah, that is huge. And now, like what I've just mentioned there, you know, boxers love hitting the mitts. Clients love hitting the mitts. People for fitness love hitting the mitts. If you're a coach and you're watching this, you want to be doing more mitt work, you know. Uh, now, I want to tell you a little bit about some of the trainers I work with. I work with Tommy Brooks, who was in the same, I was in the same training camp, camp as Evander Holyfield. Uh, he trained Mike Tyson. Tommy didn't do much mitt work with us. There's a little clip of it online, which I'll post on this video. Yeah, this is it. You know, I've done a little bit of mitt work with Tommy, but when I did do the mitt work, but I wasn't doing it all the time. He didn't like doing it, you know? And why would a coach like catching mitts with someone who punches hard like me, a light heavyweight, blasting them punches in? It, it make, it's hard on the elbows and the shoulders. It was great. Joe Gallagher, another coach I work with as a pro, hardly done any mitt work with Joe Gallagher. Another one didn't really like doing mitt work. Uh, was more heavy bag and then jumping over over a bar as well. I've done bar bag with, with Joe Gallagher. He's a great coach, but didn't do much mitt work and I didn't enjoy that. Terry Edwards, a very successful amateur boxing coach as well, didn't do that much mitt work with him. But when I did, it was great. Now, Bobby Rimmer, on the other hand, uh, who I was with for seven of my 10 professional fights, he did mitt work all the time. I absolutely loved working with, with Bobby. Yeah, he used to get sore elbows and, and sore wrists, but he did it because he knew how the benefits of it and how good it made me and how much I enjoyed it. And now if a fighter is enjoying the training camp, they're going to train more. So if you're a coach out there and you're watching this, you should be definitely doing mitt work with your boxers. Now, I know it's hard on your shoulders and your elbows. Uh, if you're in with someone who's punching really hard, you need to get some better mitts. Now, I've got some mitts that I designed myself that I made, and this is not a sales pitch at all. You can get different sort of mitts like this, and they've got air in. So this is an image of my mitts right here. They've got air in, the air, they're called the air cores. When someone is blasting them, you know, it's less impact on your shoulders and on your wrists. So if you get, invest in a good pair of mitts that's durable, that can absorb some of the punches, you know, that's gonna really help you as well. Yeah. Glenn's got these mitts he designed. He, sp he spent a full year working on the design of these mitts. And you've seen, and you can hear, when I, every time I punch them, bah, 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 it makes me feel really good, right? These mitts is great. These are the biggest selling thing that we've got in our company, Glenn Holmes mitts. And I'm afraid to say it, he sells more of them than I do mine, but I think mine's better. <laughs> but yeah, so if you're a coach and you're watching this, you definitely need to invest in some mitts and you definitely need to be doing mitt work with your boxers. And if you're a personal training coach, 
definitely be doing mitt work with your clients. And if you don't feel comfortable at it, again, it's not a sales pitch, but check out our education program or check out Glenn's mitt work package where he teaches you exactly how to hold the mitts. Yeah. Um, yeah. In that as well, there's a series of videos that are like, I've got hand, wrist, elbow, mobility uh, movements as well to help you recover from this. So if you are doing a lot of mitt work, there's videos in that package that yeah. uh, give you some drills to keep your hands healthy as well. Yeah, so there is so many pros to this and it's all down to the coach, the pros and cons, you know. Uh, and for me, you can't beat the endurance from a heavy bag. Doing six three minute rounds on a heavy bag, working on speed and power, is really hard not just physically but mentally as well because you've got to stay focused for that full time where it's easier to stay focused on the mitts because you've got a coach there in front of you but if you can get a coach to give you the mitt work you know do that all day long because yeah. you can work on different things like reactions and yeah, yeah. so the uh, punch variety as well so some punches that are awkward on a traditional heavy bike like uppercuts and body shots they're great for drilling your technique on the mitts and, and getting uh, into good positions to land them shots um, and keeping it realistic as well, what we were touching on before. So you take like the open cut hook cross combination and keep it in that small zone right there as if you was fighting an opponent. So there, and then for the body shot, you keep that as realistic as possible. One body shot, yeah, and again. And the good thing as well is, as the coach, as he's throwing that, I can look at where his non-punching hand is. If it's down, and keep him honest on it as he throws the body shot, go just make sure that hand's up. And just making sure it's getting in good positions and executing good form and technique. And whether you're boxing for fitness or you're going into a training camp or you're in a training camp for a fight, this is important stuff because it's keeping your punches realistic. It's adding your punch variety and the coach is just keeping the, the person they're working with yeah. honest and, and realistic. Yeah, and that right there is something you can't do on a, on a heavy bag. He's got that uppercut hook too tight and inside there. Look, this is a more of a realistic target. So I'll be... Bah, bah, bah work in, in like that. You can't do that on a bag. You can do it on a ball. I've done a video on the wrecking ball, but this is a target this big. This here is more condensed and more realistic. So that's another great thing about the, the mitts is, is, the, is the target size right there as well. Guys, uh, if you've got any questions on this video, is there anything we missed off? I know it's been a pretty long video. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's anything we've missed off this video that you think is the pros or cons, let us know in the comments below. Also, again, check out Glenn's YouTube channel for lots of free mitt work advice and videos also got any other questions leave them subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and thank you for watching